Hello students, I am Dr. Tanmay Vishwash. I welcome you all in my channel Chemistry the Mystery of Molecules. Today's topic of discussion is one MCQ and the question is what is the major product of this reaction? It's actually a student three step reaction and you have to say what is the major product and the starting reagent is 2 iodobenzoic acid. I request you student please read the question carefully, pause the video, try by yourself and whatever answer you get please write in the comment box. Don't hesitate whether your answer will be right or wrong because remember self-evaluation is essential for improvement and that's why you should try and don't worry after some time you'll get the right answer with proper explanation but I want to know how much you know so that's why please try. I believe you have tried by yourself so my turn to give you the right answer. The reaction if you look at is actually a multiple step reaction on this to iodobenzoic acid. If you look at this molecule there is actually three types of reaction possible. One reaction is on carbon, this carbon um, carboxylic acid group. Second reactivity you can expect this iodine, and third reactivity you can expect this benzoic means benzene ring, aromatic ring. Now, if you look at the reagent, first step reagent, NaIO4 water, and it's it's not a simple double bond in benzene, so that double bond oxidation don't expect. Actually, if you look at this, an oxidizing agent. So it is oxidizing and it cannot oxidize the double bonds of this benzene then where oxidation possible? Two options, one is carboxylic acid and another is iodine. But if you look at this iodine molecule, it's pretty interesting student, why? <coughs> Sorry, so it has these three lone pairs of electron, it's a group 17 atom halogen and among all other halogen, iodine has the lowest electronegativity and highest size. So that's why it is easier to oxidize and that's actually ox reaction happens here and when you have multiple uh, step reaction I request student please look at the first step very much careful and by the way lots of related literature I have already discussed previously so please visit the description box of this channel to get the link of those videos. Now, so mechanism if I say that in the first step this sodium I means uh, per iodate here the oxidation state of iodine is plus 7 and here if you look at minus 1. So what happened this plus 7 oxidizes minus 1 and it converted these into 2 iodosobenzoic acid. It is a very interesting molecule. Okay. So, so this is so this in this case you can see this iodine is not in its natural oxidation state that's why such reagents are called hypervalent such molecules are called hypervalent iodine reagent actually they all are oxidizing in nature too so from one oxidizing agent to oxidant you are generating another oxidizing agent this iodosobenzoic acid now in the next step Next step the reagent is AC2A acetic anhydride and the structure of this acetic anhydride is like this. Okay, So it and here the product is alcohol. So alcohol here act as nucleophile and what it does it convert this, S, this OH into acetate ester. But generally student for this purpose some base is used but in this example it is not mentioned so I didn't say but generally base is required remember for this reaction because what base does it helps to abstract this proton such that the reaction proceeds in the forward direction smoothly. So now we understand about this so here the reagent is actually Acetyl is this step is acetylation. In the next step, this is TMS, CF3, and cesium chloride catalytic amount in acetonitrile means is a solvent. So, what this thing actually happening? If you want to know this silyl chemistry, by the way, I have already discussed many dedicated lectures on this. Please visit for better understanding. So, this TMS means trimethyl silyl and CF3. So, here CF3 is attached to this silicon center. Now, this CF3 is actually nothing but you can consider this is a carbon type nucleophile. Although I am not telling that this CF3 minus it is very stable, no, no, it is not like that, but you may consider it in this way. 
Now, here if you provided catalytic amount of cesium fluoride, why? Cesium fluoride is ionic compound and it is actually stored in the source of fluoride anion. So, what does this fluoride does? This fluoride attacks this silicon center. After attacking what it produces? It produces student this silicon F bond uh, and the negative charge is on this complex. Okay. So, you may consider this one negative charge is on silicon or the overall complex. Fine. Now, I think next thing that actually this became silicon region became negatively charged and this silicon fluorine bond is very strong because d pi p pi back bonding. So, that is why what it does it releases this CF3 group as CF3 minus. Okay. So, it releases CF3 group CF3 minus. So, in this case it can act as nucleophile 2 point number 1 and what is the product here? this trimethyl silyl fluoride this very strong this silicon fluorine bond because of back bonding and which results in partial double bond character in this silicon fluorine bond. Now that we understand what happens this CF3 minus is nucleophile attacks these iodine center and OAC leaves ok. So, consequently this reagent is produced. So, it is a you may consider CF3 analogous of Togness region that that way you can expect. So, it produces so this is the product. Now, if you look at the key steps and name reaction involved in this overall discussion first step is the 2 iodo so I repeat the word so. So, 2 iodo so benzoic acid previously was 2 iodo benzoic acid these name do not get confused. 2 iodo benzoic acid ok from 2 iodoso benzoic acid. Now, it converted into this hypervalent reagent uh, sorry this 2 iodoso benzoic acid reagent which undergo acetylation to produce this acetylated derivative and later on nucleophilic trifluoromethylation reaction. Why nucleophilic? Because CF3 minus which act as nucleophile and replaces this group. So, in this way this is product is produced. Now, what is the answer of today's discussion? Option C is the right answer. Now, if this question appear in your exam and less than 30 seconds how can you solve this question for this thing? You can understand this CF TMS CF3 student. So, you can understand that ok sodium iodate will oxidize and you can see here all case iodine is in hypervalent state no issue. So, iodine will be oxidized fine. Next acetylation that is true. If I say acetylation is it really possible free OH will be there? Obviously not because the next reagent is TMS CF3. It can produce at maximum CF3 minus, but that CF3 minus is not that much strong base which can hydrolyze some ester into corresponding OH and no water is given it is acetonitrile as solvent catalytic amount of cesium fluoride not possible. So, from this logic option A and option B gone because it has OH groups. Now, let us compare C versus D if you think from that cesium fluoride is there ok, but this fluoride will preferentially bind with silicon TMS trimethyl silyl. Com and consequently this CF3 minus will be released. Now, you may think that sir CF3 minus is that much stable actually student it is not that much stable, but it is not that much unstable too. So, that is why it will act as the nucleophile. So, it will not release fluoride minus under that condition and difluorocarbene no 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 not that possible. So, actually it happens, but in this case it will not happen. So, consequently CF3 will act as nucleophile. So, option D is also gone. So, by that kind of proper elimination strategy you can come up to the right answer less than 30 second, but for that purpose enough study is essential. So, so in conclusion what I have learned today that iodine could easily be oxidized compared to other halogens. I repeat compared to other halogens as it is it is the lowest electronegative among these four, uh, other halogens and it has the largest size among all other halogens ok. And in this case this 2 iodo benzoic acid is converted into 2 iodo so benzoic acid or IBA upon oxidation with sodium per iodate. 
Third, the anhydrides are nucleophilic in nature. Uh, anhydrides are sorry, not nucleophilic. There's a mistake. They are e sorry, electrophilic. They are electrophilic in nature, and it could be converted into a star if you treat it with alcohol. But for this purpose, base is generally needed to make the reaction in the forward direction. And next point, trimethyl silyl trifluoromethyl. That reagent I have shown, TMSCF3. Could release CF3 group in presence of F minus. Not only CF3, CF3 anion. Okay, because generally the silicon fluorine or silicon oxygen bonds are very stable. I guess you have studied alcohol protection as silyl ether. So very stable due to partial double bond character due to this d pi p pi back bonding. I mean vacant d of silicon involves. So not this s. It should be si. So vacant D of silicon involved in taking electron pair either from uh, these fluorine or oxygen because they both have lone pairs of electron and here 2p electron is donated to 3d which is considered as d pi p pi back bonding because oxygen is back donating to silicon or fluorine is back donating to silicon. And finally, CF3 group has a very strong minus I effect due to the 3F atom attached to the carbon and its electronegativity of this whole CF3 group is assumed in between, I repeat, in between chlorine, so it's greater than chlorine and less than chlorine. This is a very important functional group and this is the reference of this problem. You can visit this review for further learning. Now. This is the end of this question. Thanks for watching. If you really enjoy the content of my channel, please help this channel to grow by subscribing this channel, like the video, comment, write your opinion and share it among your friends. That's the most important thing. And if you are happy with my teaching, you may visit to other of my channels for further learning. So see you in my next video. Bye bye.